This is Jenny Brav of Radiant Wholeness Healing. One of the things that I really like about EFT, also known as tapping, EFT is short for emotional freedom techniques, is that it's a very simple self-help tool that you can do anytime, anywhere. It's easy to learn and it works. In the last video, I was showing you the tapping points. So today we're going to be looking at how to put it all together with words. And especially if you're doing it on yourself, I invite you to keep it really simple. And if you're super triggered, it can be helpful to tap with a video rather than trying to figure it out on your own, but I'll let you be the judge of that. And so the first thing is pick an issue you wanna work on. It's good for it to be specific for EFT to work well, because if you choose something that's really big, really general, then it will pull up a lot of different memories, a lot of different emotions, and then it's harder to hone in on what's wanting healing. So first thing is pick an issue you, can, you wanna work on. So it can be something from your past that you know is still with you, it could be a memory, it could be a pattern, a habit that you have, an emotion that comes up often. It can also be something really specific that's happening right now, like anxiety about a test you're taking or about um, a job interview, anything like that. So once you've picked the issue, then feel into the intensity of it from zero to 10, 10 being the most charged. And that can be kind of general, generally how charged it feels, how charged it feels in this moment. And the rating is really just a guideline. I know some people can get pretty tripped up about numbers. Um, and this is just for you to get a sense at the end if the charge has gone down. As I said in the last video, it can be helpful to have water and also tissues when you're starting a session. So let's get started. And this is the setup point or karate chop point. And the standard setup in EFT is, even though I have whatever your issue is, so let's say it's anxiety about tomorrow's test. Even though I'm feeling anxious about tomorrow's test. And then the next standard thing you say is some derivative of, I love and accept myself. Deeply and completely. And in the standard st setup, you would repeat this three times. I often skip that or just say something similar in different ways. But let's do that. Even though I'm anxious about tomorrow's test, I love and accept myself. Even though I have so much anxiety about tomorrow's test, I'm open to loving and accepting myself deeply and completely. And that's especially good if you're not feeling love and acceptance in this moment. Pretending that you do can create more blockages internally. So saying something like, I'm open to, or at some point I might, or I'm choosing to love and accept myself are good variations because for EFT to work, you also want what you're saying to feel true. Otherwise it will cause what psychologists call cognitive dissonance, which is often what causes our blocks in the first place. So let's take a deep breath, exhale, and it's good to breathe throughout the tapping rounds because that also helps release block energy in your meridians or energetic circuitry, which is why we're tapping on our body in the first place. 
So we've done the setup and then go to the top of the head. And again, it can be here or all over the head. And here you start just naming what's here, what's present. This anxiety. Inside of the eyebrows. This fluttering in my stomach. Outside of the eyes, take a deep breath. Exhale. So much anxiety. Under the eyes. So hard to breathe. Okay, take another deep breath. And here as we're cycling through the points and just naming what is, I like to focus both on the emotional aspect, but also the physiological aspect. So you'll notice that I'm talking about what's happening in the body. The fluttering in the stomach, hard to breathe. And that's because if we're talking about emotions or we're talking about the content, sometimes that can actually ratchet up the anxiety. We go into story, we go into doomsday scenarios, and that can actually lead us to spin more. Whereas bringing it back to something concrete, like what's happening in the body can get us out of story and can actually really help settle the nervous system. The other variation that I do, instead of just saying this anxiety, this fluttering in my stomach is to say hi to it because really we're naming it so that there's this welcoming sense and it's no longer this scary thing that's happening to us that we have no control over. So for me, and you'll notice that if you've done any of my videos, I do this a lot, I would probably say, hello, anxiety. Hi, fluttering in my stomach. And you can use one hand or two hands. Hello, shortness of breath. And then I often add, I feel you. And then above the lips, take a deep breath. I see you. And I add that in because often our wounding comes from feeling not seen. So this is a way of, again, getting closer to the agitated parts, of getting closer to the agitated parts and helping them see, feel seen. This is a way of getting closer to the agitated parts and helping them feel seen. So then under the collarbone. And then here you can even repeat the setup if you want to, even though I'm feeling so anxious. Middle of the sternum. And it's bringing up so many emotions. Tapping on the ribs. And my body is feeling so agitated. Side of the body. And I'm Resisting all of it. Inside of the wrist and outside. Because it feels terrible. Of the wrist. Maybe I can accept that that's what's happening right now. Good, take a deep breath. And then check in with your body. 
And again, as you've noticed, if you've done any of my videos, often I'll just do a flow and we don't stop between rounds, but especially if you're tapping on yourself, it's really good to simplify and slow it down. So do one round and really notice if the physiological aspects of what was going on have gone down in charge, especially if you're tapping when already a little triggered or if just thinking about your issue gets you agitated. And so the invitation is to keep on tapping on, you know, the surface level, the issue, but then also really honing in on the physical sensations until the charge in your body is maybe a two or a three at most. And then once that is down, you can keep going with the emotions associated with it. And so then you could do another round. You can either kind of tap fluidly without doing the setup again, but if you want, you can do the setup again on the emotions that are associated with it. So for example, even though I'm feeling frustrated that I still have so much anxiety, because I've been working on this for so many years, I'm open to loving and accepting myself. at some point with all of this. So take a deep breath. Perfect. And the philosophy behind the setup is to accept what is and what's here and to bring loving attention to it. Because if we resist what's happening, it's just going to get stronger. And this is really the spiritual idea is that the best way to shift something is to accept how they are to allow them to be here. So then in the next point, you'd just be cycling through the emotions. High frustration. High hopelessness. high fear. And if you want, you can bring in the beliefs, but again, it's good to keep it simple. So for example, high belief that it's never going to change. I see you. I feel you. Part of me doesn't want you here at all. Ribs. And maybe it's okay that you're here. Out of the body. Maybe I have more resilience than I think. Deep breath. Inside and outside of the rest. I'm open to allowing these emotions to be here. Other rest. I know if I don't, they'll only get stronger. Deep breath. And exhale. So again, one round or several on the physical sensations, another round on the emotions. And then you can slip in a little bit of the beliefs if you want, or just stick to the emotions. And then in the third round, you can start bringing in some of the beliefs. And this can also be your inner critic. Even though I'm really judging myself for this anxiety, telling myself I should be over this by now. I'm open to loving and accepting myself deeply and completely with all of this deep breath. 
Exhale. High judgment. High inner critic. High belief that I'm not good enough. That I always screw things up. That I should be over this by now. I see you. I feel you. Deep breath. ribs. I know you're just trying to get me to be better. Out of the body. But every time you say these things to me, wrist, I feel terrible. My wrist. So maybe it's not working. Deep breath, pause. And we're going to pause there too. So again, with each round, and you can do as little of this as you want to, you could really just stay with the physical sensations and get that down to a two or a three, and that is already great. And I know I said this was going to be basic and I'm actually walking you through a slightly more complete session, but again, you can choose whatever part of this you want to. And with all of it, with the physical sensations, with the emotions, with the belief, it's good to keep tapping until what you're tapping on feels a lot less in charge um, before or in intensity before you go on to the next thing. And you can stop between each round. You can tap a few times on the same thing and then check in, or you can keep going. You don't have to go back to the setup point with each thing if you don't want to, especially if you've been tapping for a while. But again, if you're new at this, it's good to really break it down, slow it down. So the next part is to tie in what's coming up for you now, the beliefs, the emotions, the physical sensations with when they might have started in your childhood. Even though I have all of this anxiety about the test tomorrow, And my inner critic is having a field day. And I'm realizing it's connected to grandma and all of her expectations. And all the time she yelled at me about bad grades. I'm open to loving and accepting myself. Deep breath. And of course, that's just an example and you can feel into whatever feels true for you. And if you're not sure, you can skip this. There are also other videos like my advanced tapping videos that are linked below where I walk you through these questions so that you can have the answers before you start tapping. Tapping on your head. And here, this is where I like to bring in the younger you. So hi, young me. And if you have an age, you could say hi, six-year-old me. I see you, I feel you. I know you're still in me. 
I am so sorry that you got the message that middle of the sternum, your worth depended on your performance, ribs, and here you can feel into the messages you got. If the setup is working on a specific memory, so for example, getting yelled at by your first grade teacher, you could also tap on that instead of message. You could say, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Of course you learned to try really hard. inside of the wrist to be hypervigilant. To walk on eggshells, take a deep breath. And so here, as you see, we're kind of tying in what the memory is, what the wounding is, with the coping strategy that your younger self developed at the time, which is probably related to what's happening right now. For example, if you're working on anxiety, kids usually aren't born anxious. It's a strategy that we develop when things feel unpredictable, volatile, we're feeling really unsettled and uneasy. So it's a way for us to scan the outside environment to figure out what we need to do in the hopes that at some point we can be calm and settled and feel safe. However, when these coping strategies don't get updated to match our current situation, then usually they cause more problems than they're actually helping with. But in this case, we wanna really acknowledge, oh yeah, that was a brilliant strategy. That's what you needed to do at the time. So. Um, this time I'm not going to pause, we can keep going and we could actually say that. That was so smart of you. That was exactly what you needed to do. And it's possible, it's safe for us to start letting go. Because the good news is we're not little anymore. And if you had a specific age, you could also say we're not six anymore. And so in this part, what we're doing is we're really tying the childhood wounding coping strategy back into the present. So as you'll see, we started the session with where we're at now the wounding, the beliefs, the physical sensations, just allowing it to be. And then we're moving towards another possibility, another way of being by bridging the past with the present. And so we're saying to the young self, of course you feel that way. Look at everything that happened to you. And then we're updating. So this is the young self here. This is the present moment. So then we're wanting to update that to present time and show the young self hey, the good news is we're not in that situation anymore. So you can keep going here. We just said we're not little anymore. And I have so many tools and resources, middle of the sternum, that you didn't have. Breathe. And it's really important not to rush the young parts, otherwise they're really going to dig their heels in. So here, if you want, you can also say, ribs, we can hang on to this strategy, side of the body, as long as you want to, as long as you need to, to feel safe. Other wrist. There is no pressure. Hand. And when and if you want. Inside of the eyebrows.
outside of the eyes only if you want under the eyes because you're so tired under and above the lips of having to be hyper vigilant all the time under the collarbone it's exhausting middle sternum then we can release this good deep breath And you can end there. You can go through that round again with the young self. You can go back to the physical sensations if they come back. So this is doesn't have to be linear at any point. You can go back and forth. And if something is coming up for you, if emotions are coming up, if memories are coming up, rather than trying to follow sequence, it's good to just tap on what's here because your psyche and your body have their own wisdom as to what's wanting healing. And what I like to do at the end of all of this, if the young part is like, oh yeah, I'm so ready to let go of this, is to let go of the coping strategy, pop the trauma capsule where, you know, some six-year-old part of you is still stuck and bring that part back into the heart and update the information to current time. You'll see me doing that in some of my videos, but again, that's more advanced and that's really only if you feel ready then. So I hope this was helpful. It ended up being a lot more in depth than I had planned it to be, but again, you can chunk it down and do whatever step works for you. And at the end, I like to tap all over the body just to seal the healing. Shaking it out just moves the energy and then touching something grounding helps you come back to yourself and your body. So I hope you're having a wonderful day and you can like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm going to do more of these tutorials if you're wanting to learn how to do EFT. I also have guided meditations and lots of videos and of course, all the information needed for doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with me is below as I help my clients learn how to tap on themselves. Thank you so much.